find poetry in a way yeah. because it's like uh, you know it's not stuff that you're supposed to necessarily it's, it's symbolic and allegorical and there's lots of the metaphors and stuff that is intended for people who are more like thinking people um, and uh, then people that might take it in one crazy or extreme or another but people there's an extremist nature in you in the in the in the human right. you know fabric of things that there it's bound to happen there's bound to be wackos that turn out to be the night stalker that uh, mm -hmm. was also a big fan of Anton um, Ramirez showed up to yeah, listen to ACDC yeah 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 and stuff like that people that like you know that essentially ca caused all the hysteria and mania in the 80s that they called the satanic panic where all these different talk show hosts were jumping on this bandwagon in cooperation with uh, you know, these pop psychologists that were you know churning out these you know books on repressed memories and sort of giving kids leading questions to make them say things to you know, incite these insane you know, court court cases like the McMartin preschool case and things that uh, led to the you know, ruining of dozens and hundreds maybe of families um, and all it really proved was that you know, the witch hunts never really ended, you know. Yeah, it's like the satanic panic. Well, in the, 80, in the 80s, like it like totally it. was. Yeah, I mean, there yeah. were, and then gangster rap came over, and then no way gives a shit about it anymore. But you were saying <laughs> LaVey Satanism versus other Satanism. What were you going to well, say? Well, because, like, you and I and Kat Bob in the conversation, you were making jokes. I'm like, oh, there's, there's a difference, and then I think we just covered it now. What's the difference? Oh, the difference is uh, LaVey Satanism is is uh, do what you want, but don't yeah, hurt exactly. anybody. Yeah, exactly. Pretty much take yeah. responsibility yeah. for your own life. Take responsibility for yeah. Yeah, yourself yeah. and, and yeah. you live and here and where and with respect. And, and, and it has a pagan kind of aspect yeah. to it. Yeah. And, and that's like yeah. how I, well, I was just saying, yeah. it's like, I remember, and I still, I wish I had, it's at my parents' house that I would underline, I had the same when I was in high school, and I would go to Catholic school, but I was like, but if you read, they're like, you're a Satanist, but I'm like, actually, it would be way more, like, LeVay Satanist, like, right. way more than Christianity, because I'm like, if you read the Bible, are you effing kidding me? Yeah. Like, it I mean, is like, full it's of horror. But, but, yeah. you're, but you're, you're no, you're no, yeah, you're no stranger to being uh, blasphemous. I, I was reading today. You said that uh, grief was misogynist. <laughs> grief is fucking misogynist. Don't even get me started on grief. I'm He's not like, hey, you're a big fat person. You want to go to the prom with me? You know, and she's like, Who's, he's what, so what, mean. What was this? I, 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 that I one girl that's like the time. chubby girl. Yeah. And, yeah, exactly. Watch grief now, and you're going to be like uh, horrified. Yeah, how yeah. how far? I'm like, I can't. We could do the whole. Well, wasn't there an ugly guy too? Well, can, well, first of all, it's like just a breakdown. Not Travolta, Travolta. No, well, you yeah. know, what's her name? Sandy comes and she's, you know, from Australia. You know, she's cute and she doesn't know anyone and she comes to this new school and she meets this dude on a vacation and he's so <coughs> nice to her. She's like, oh my god, we're the same school. And he's like, fuck you, bitch. I don't give a fuck about you. She's like <laughs> devastated. And then she's got to drink alcohol and smoke cigarettes to like fit in. I'm like, why can't she? But just, it doesn't you know, mean and long then bully, the pink ladies bully the shit out of her. Wait, wait, doesn't, doesn't, and, doesn't. And I'm like, how is Rizzo like even in, in high school? She's like 60 years old. Yeah, I know, she's like 42. But, yeah, but, like, but, but, I thought it was an undercover shit. Like she was like a, a cop but, but, trying to bust up the, the driving ring. That's yeah, a Travolta. That's a Travolta. Like Tarantino remake yeah. of Greece, right? Yeah. She's an undercover cop trying yeah. to bust up like the drive, like the, the speed drive. What is it? What is it? Like, the the, uh, the, 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 uh, the uh, Grease Lightning. Yeah. Yeah. She's trying to bust the Grease Lightning crew. I'm like, and they're bullies. The fucking pink ladies are fucking naked or fucking getting. Women on, that's a woman on women. Yeah, it's bullying. And, and, and so they bully the, they, they, this guy's not bullied. They bully. And then I don't know how Rizzo's even pregnant. How could she even get pregnant? Because she's like 50 years old. <laughs> I know, I know. And then Kanicki's like, it's not my baby, even though I didn't use a condom. And, you know, and I mean, he's Greece like, is, yeah, Kanicki's like, so like you have menopause. How did you uh, have a baby? And they're just, they're but, mean. But American Graffiti came first. And that's yeah. not, that's Well, what I'm saying is I think Greece is kind of like the disco answer to American Graffiti, isn't it? Isn't yeah. It's like what it is. Yeah. And then they leave Frenchie in the goddamn, she knows she's obviously tripping on acid, mm -hmm. thinking that, you know, yeah, that guy's yeah. coming out of the sky and she's got pink hair and she's yeah. obviously on drugs, and they leave her alone in that malt shop. They turn off the lights and they're like, bye, and she's like, and then beauty school dropout happened, and you know she's on drugs, like that, she's high as fuck, like, yeah. you know. You, know you cool? junkie, go back you know to high school, yeah. you, know you fucking cracker. You know what's though, is that somehow he manages to be a Scientologist, it's kind of like Beck, he manages to be a Scientologist and not, uh, remarkably, he doesn't come across like as big of a douchebag as we, as I would think, like, naturally, yeah, one I mean, would want him, want to believe he is. Yeah. It's like, you know, like, instinct kind of makes me go, oh my god, I want to think John Travolta's this douchebag, but he's not, and he doesn't come across as one, 
and um, and he, I think he's cool. You know, I think he's I, I have cool. a lot of I have a few, yeah. I have a few Scientologist friends. My whole thing with religion, and I'm not religious. I I'm an agnostic Buddhist. I meditate sometimes, but uh, if it works for you. Yeah, sure. And you don't yeah, leave really, me alone. I don't give a shit what you want. Just don't yeah. be oppressive. Yeah, yeah. or you know, I mean, uh, yeah, or on the flip side, you know, uh, religion should do damage control. You know, when it comes to people like their biggest sponsors, like Tom Cruise, jumping around, you know, flailing about over you know, yeah, Scientology. He's, 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 he's excited. He's a wacko. He's but right. in that book, and he's so but, catered by them. Like they do everything. They pull up the stops. They made a whole. I read the book, the Going Clear book. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I watched the documentary, but there's so much more in the book. So I'm sure, yeah. well, what's, where Scientology really gets interesting is in these fringe groups that um, don't even publicly identify as branches of Scientology that you wouldn't even otherwise know uh, have to do with Scientology, like up the street, uh, the, um, uh, the Psychiatry Industry of Death Museum. That's all Scientologists. That's Scientology, yeah. but you would never know right. it, and you, there's no mention of it anywhere mm-hmm. re- in relation to right. it. And I know the history of that uh, Psychiatry Industry of Death thing. It, it it actually began get this as a suicide hotline that was a cult that would invite people to call them to prevent suicide so that they could use that as a means of initiating them into their cult by yeah but I mean how low does it go right? wow and uh, and uh, there was this period of time in the like uh, during the mid and late seventies where a lot of these cults that um, were uh, kind of like semi to relatively successful in the late 60s uh, and even earlier than that were um, kind of um, evapor- evaporating due to like you know post helter skelter right. type uh, you know just freaked out society and so these um, cults were uh, going bankrupt and wholesaling right. off their whole cult businesses in Scientology bought out that one among many other cults. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, that sounds like the it's like garage sale shopping for cults. Well, that sounds like Christianity. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you totally. know what I mean? But well, it's just they, like, well, they're they like, oh. a lot of tips from Christianity. Yeah, it's like the black flags. Oh, everybody's dying. We can't. Well, put, in, right. put in that pesky Bible that you can't kill yourself. Or you're going to go to hell. In Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard, you know, yeah. uh, L. Ron Hubbard's first L.A. publicist was this guy, Forrest Ackerman. You might yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. 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 Forrest Ackerman. He, 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 he uh, published Famous Monsters magazine. Yes, yeah. And he also coined the term sci-fi. Right. And L. Ron was a sci-fi writer, and yeah. before he was his publicist, and before he used to complain to me about uh, how L. Ron owed him fifteen dollars, and that even <laughs> after he had amassed like this <laughs> fortune of millions of dollars, that when Forey would run into him places, he would say, "Hey, where's my fifteen bucks?" And L. Ron would say, would either say, "Oh, I forgot my wallet at home tonight," or he'd right. go to the bathroom and then run out the back door <laughs> to get away from paying Forey fifteen bucks or something like that wow. that he owed him for like twenty-five years. Right. Uh, well, you really came into your own, I, I guess, early two thousands. Yeah. Uh, you had you bought a bookstore, I guess, yeah. across the street. Open a bookstore. Open yeah. a bookstore. Uh, Odin. Yeah. Okay. And uh, apparently, a lot of a uh, lot of celebrity clientele. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, you you uh, you had also uh, in two thousand six 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 six. Yeah. You uh, you. That had might be finally coming out on DVD. It looks like. Okay, so yeah. you, you had a wedding. Yes. But not uh, apparently not a real wedding. No. Uh, it was ordained by Elvis, the Mexican Elvis. I love yeah, that guy. That's right, yeah. And uh, Hank uh, the Third played. Yeah. Danzig played with him. Alkaline and Trio. Al- Alkaline Lamb, Trio. Lamb of God. Real Lamb of God. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Murder Junkies. Right. And Forty Five Grades. That's that's a great lineup. Yeah. Yeah. When did Gigi Allen die? Oh, back in the nineties. Yeah. Early nineties. Early nineties, yeah. right? Uh, but you know, actually, but your, your grandfather uh, lived lived uh, longer than he did, right? He was. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you guys know about Dole Night and Dole Night movie coming out? Oh, Rudy, Rudy Ray Moore. Oh, that's yeah. right. I saw Rudy Ray I was just watching Dole Night, the Rudy Ray Moore. Uh, you know Rudy Ray You know Rudy Ray Moore? At Rudy, I I paid Rudy to perform at Six Six Six. It was his last paid show before he died. Jesus, yeah. now, now I'm impressed. Wow. Yeah. I love Rudy Ray. And at the time, everybody was like, what the hell are you doing, Sam, hiring this guy and, uh, amidst all these other sort of like, kind of like, uh, like punk heavy metal type acts and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I've got my reasons, you know. And now... How'd like, he go over? He, he, I don't know. It was towards the end. People he was, just didn't get it. Yeah. People didn't get it and he didn't come across great. He was yeah. sick. He yeah. was really sick. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and uh, we had to lure him on stage with hundreds of dollars. He showed up with... Uh, Pimp, um, Don Magic Don Warren, Magic his Warren, friend, yeah. and he, yeah. he named Archbishop. Mm-hmm. I didn't know this, but Dolomite named him Archbishop. He did? Yes, yeah. Oh, wow. And so Eddie Murphy's playing Rudy Ray Moore in a movie coming out. 
Did you guys know that? I knew that there was. I thought it was Mike Epps, but I knew there was no Dolan. Yeah, no. Eddie, it's Eddie Murphy playing Rudy Ray Moore. Oh, um, and uh, yeah, they're talking. 